In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. While some people were speaking about how the temple was adorned with costly stones and votive offerings. Jesus said, all that you see here, the days will come when there will not be left, a stone upon another stone that will not be thrown down. When they asked him, teacher, when will this happen? And what sign will there be when all these things are about us to, about to happen? He answered, see that you do not be deceived. For many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time has come. Do not follow them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for such things must happen first, but it will not immediately be the end. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be powerful earthquakes, famines and plagues from place to place, and awesome sights and mighty signs will come from the sky. Before all this happens, however, they will seize and persecute you. They will hand you over to the synagogue and to prisons, and they will have you led before kings and governors because of my name. It will lead to your giving testimony. Remember, you are not to prepare your defense beforehand, for I, for I myself shall give you a wisdom in speaking, that all your adversaries will be powerless to resist or refute. You will even be handed over by parents, brothers, relatives, and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair on your head will be destroyed. By your perseverance, you will secure your lives. The Gospel of the Lord. There will be great earthquakes and in various places, famines and plagues. In 1906, the city of San Francisco was virtually destroyed because of a powerful earthquake. Afterwards, religious spokesmen began to interpret the disaster because of uh, disaster in terms of divine judgment. They drew parallels between San Francisco and the biblical cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Also, they predicted that this was the beginning of the end of the world. But not everyone bought that explanation. A newspaper reporter walking through the devastation saw a liquor distillery that had hardly been touched, and on the other side of it, a church building that had been leveled. So the man wrote a little verse about it. If, as they say, God spanked the town for being over frisky, why did he burn the churches down and spare the devil's whiskey? The readings of today are difficult only because of the apocalyptic style which mixes together historic events, sayings of Jesus, and a sense of doom. There are only a few encouraging words added at the end. By your endurance, you will gain your soul. A paraphrase of this gospel might go like this. You're going to live in troubled times. There will be natural disasters, like earthquakes, plagues, famines, armies will develop new weapons, and 
that rain down fire from the sky and destroy cities, temples, libraries, museums, everything. But no matter what happens, do not lose faith in God. The evils that will come upon the world are of two kinds, as evil has always been. The first is linked to nature, such as the earthquake. The second comes from the sinful designs of people, such as rulers, generals seeking power, and dictators trampling on human rights. When these things happen, do not lose faith. God is still there to sustain you. There will be persecution of people for political reasons, but also for their religious beliefs. In some countries, people will be forbidden to worship altogether, even to possess a Bible. Their missionaries will be forbidden to convert anyone. Many will die violently. But all in all this, stand firm. By patient endurance, you will save your souls. The evil events we see flash across our screens on the evening news can be devastating, even if we don't put them in perspective. However, this does not have to be as good as it gets. But what is enduring? It seemed to the disciples that the temple of Jerusalem would last forever. It was to be one of the wonders of the world, adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God. Early in the 20th century, a spectacular ship named the Titanic was built to be unsinkable. But the temple was destroyed and the Titanic sunk because they are not the sort of things that endure. The things that truly count in life are love, compassion, forgiveness, concern, and understanding. Let's add joyfulness, playfulness, laughter, and the sparkle in the eye of a child, too. It's comforting to know that these are some of the things that endure, even beyond the worst of tragedies. You'll see it in the aftermath of chaos of natural disasters and war. The photographers and journalists will be there pointing this out to us. Gordon Parks, a life photographer, did this masterfully. The promise of a deep abiding serenity is the meaning of Christ's words today. It's important things like love, compassion, forgiveness. They're the things that endure. Then they should be our primary concern. We can build a temple, a ship, a business, a fortune, knowing it can be destroyed. But instead, we need to build love, friendship, a peaceful home, knowing that their fruits will endure forever. Christopher Reeve, properly known as Superman, was severely injured in a riding accident shortly after he married his wife, Dana. In his book, Still Me, Dana says, I will be with you for the long haul, no matter what. And then she added the words that saved his life. You are still you, and I love you. When we hear these ending times readings and ponder the mystery of a second coming and death, it's comforting to discover that God's unconditional love is saying to us, I will be with you for the long haul, no matter what. You are still you, and 
I love you. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve you with constancy, the author of all that is good. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that your Son command us to do in memory of him may bring us growth and charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass heaven, go in the peace of Christ. Thanks to God.